I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas and today we're here to talk about Dell Precision T3610 memory upgrade kits and how to properly configure the system. Well hey thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell Precision T3610. Do us a favor if you find anything useful today click that like and smash that subscribe. Well hey let's get started. Uh, first things first this is a one CPU socket system. It utilizes Intel Xeon E5 1600 V1 or V2 series CPUs or Intel Xeon E5 uh, 2600 V1 or V2 series CPUs, uh, which is actually one of the benefits from the past generation, the uh, T3600. Uh, it took the same CPUs on the V1 side, but it did not accept V2s. Uh, this machine does accept V2s, which is one of the, uh, the upgrades. Um, there are uh, eight DIMM slots inside uh, utilizing DDR3 memory. Uh, there's a couple of different size sticks you can use. You can use uh, as low as a 2 gig, a 4 gig, 8 gig, or all the way up to 16 gig, but only one type of module except 16 gigs, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, there's a number of different speeds you can use. You can go as low as 1066 megahertz, 1333, 1600, or all the way up to 1866. Uh, on that note, there are three types of RAM that you can use inside. The most prevalent and most common as far as we're concerned and what we recommend is ECC registered, also known as RDIM, but you have two other choices as well. You have ECC unbuffered, which is more of a server UDIM, uh, or you have non-ECC unbuffered, which is more of your traditional desktop module. And yes, all three will work inside. Uh, however, you cannot mix them. So if you're at home and uh, you're looking to upgrade your system right now and you currently have, let's say, uh, desktop modules inside, you can't grab uh, you know, four ECC registered and mix them with four uh, non-ECC unbuffered. It just won't work. So you have to have all of one type. You, technically, you can mix speeds if you want. Um, it's just going to clock down to the slowest speed that you have running. Uh, we don't really recommend that because some machines really don't like that. It can be a little finicky, and you just don't really want to mix speeds. And generally, want to match your modules. Uh, but wanted to, to point that out there. So uh, on that note, ECC registered RDIMs, uh, which is what we recommend. Uh, the big advantage is the max that you can put in. So uh, the max with ECC registered is 128 gigabytes using eight 16 gigs all the way at 1866 uh, megahertz. Now with uh, non-ECC unbuffered, your traditional desktop module, uh, you're gonna get uh, a total of eight eight gigs for 64 gigabytes, which is gonna be half of uh, your capacity and also at 1866 megahertz. And it's the exact same for the, uh, the uh, ECC unbuffered server DIMMs. It's gonna be 64 gigabytes, eight by eight at um, 1866. So uh, on that note, you can see why we recommend the ECC registered. One, they're a little bit cheaper on a price per gigabyte, and then two, you can max it out and have more scalability. Uh, to me, that's a win-win. So uh, we recommend our DIMMs for uh, uh, the, the Dell Precision T3610. So anyhow, on that note, we're going to go ahead and hop into the machine. Uh, I want to show you how to properly configure it. Uh, there's some uh, kind of strange air baffles on this that are very similar to the T5810. Uh, I'll show you how to uh, remove them, uh, how to get into the, the DIMM slots them Themselves. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Really, you, you never want to be inside a machine uh, without some kind of uh, electrostatic discharge protection. Uh, otherwise, you could potentially damage the machine. And I get it. A lot of people at home are using this as a desktop, and you probably don't have ESD gear, and that's fine. So what I would recommend is two things. One, make sure you're not doing this on top of carpet, especially if you have uh, like the, the shag carpet. Uh, that has a ton of electrostatic in it. Uh, you can easily damage the machine, the motherboard, the procs, the memory, all sorts of stuff. Um, and another thing I recommend, um, is uh, before you get inside, touch a piece of metal, a uh, piece of copper. Uh, it'll actually help dissipate some of the, uh, the the ESD that's on your hand. So uh, just a couple simple things that you can do to help protect your machine if you don't have uh, ESD gear. So I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. Uh, this is very simple, pretty much like any desktop. You're just going to pull this tab right here, and it's just going to lift straight up. Okay, and voila, we are in. Very simple, right? Um, so one of the things about the design for uh, the, the 3610, uh, like I said, it's very similar to the uh, 5810. Uh, if you want to access uh, the modules, you're going to need to remove the hard drive cage here. Uh, so the best way to do this, uh, there's this uh, latch right here that you simply lift up. And when you do, the cage slides forward, and then you can lift it up. Okay. Now because of the SATA cables that are attached here, I'm going to toss it to the side. I have it balanced right here. Hopefully it doesn't block too much of the video. Uh, you can't put it over here on the, it's just, there's not a whole lot of uh, give unless you start removing all the cables. So we're just 
going to put it over here. Okay, um, and as we discussed, there's one CPU. Uh, the CPU controls all eight DIMM slots. There's four DIMM slots over here and four DIMM slots over here. Both of them have uh, a unique air baffle that uh, Dell has designed. Uh, and then you see our Quadro card over here for video. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the air baffles. Really, it's actually pretty simple. There's a blue tab that you pop right here and it lifts straight up. Now be careful for the cable and you can just pull it. So I'll note, so this is the tab and you're just going to pull it like this. Okay. And you'll also note there uh, is a little plastic piece that goes into uh, a hole that's carved out over here. So when we want to put it back in, that will go in there and then you'll just simply pop it. But we'll show you that here in a second. So I'll put the air baffle to the side. Same deal with this air baffle. You're just going to pull the blue clip and simply lift it up. Blue clip, plastic piece at the end. Okay. Uh, now that we are all good on the air baffles, uh, you'll see that right now the configuration that this came with, uh, it was standard from Dell. Uh, th it's two two gigs. It's uh, honestly pretty weak from a performance standpoint. So uh, we actually had a local customer drop by and wanted us to upgrade this for him. Uh, so we're putting in 128 gigabytes. Uh, so it's going to be 16. I'm sorry, uh, eight 16 gigs. Uh, so it's going to be a, a huge boost for him overall, and that's one of the things that we always tell people. Um, if you're using this for, you know, gaming, or you're using this as your uh, your desktop at home, and you're looking to increase your overall performance, really memory is where it's at. Memory is um, the best way to uh, increase your just day-to-day -day performance. So uh, on that note, we're going to go ahead and show you how to actually remove the modules, and then we're going to discuss the channels here. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's start with the channels um, because I like that the fact that there, since there's only two DIMMs in, it's important to note that uh, you have dim slot one over here and dim slot two over here so if you were only putting in two dims which I certainly don't recommend but if that's what you were doing you would put them in the two outside uh, white slots and the white is the start of the memory channel so if you look at it there's uh, four memory channels and each memory channel has two dims per channel so if you were putting in let's just say four you would actually use the next two white slots this is dim slot three right here and this is dim slot four so it would be one two three four okay now as I said I personally recommend putting all eight modules in but if you were putting in four you use the four white dim slots if you were putting in two you'd use the two outside white dim slots okay so hopefully that helps somebody out there uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to properly remove the module one common mistake that I see people do is they just go like this and they just push both tabs down at one time and when you do that the module just kinda not every time but sometimes it shoots straight up uh, it could potentially come down uh, hit a piece of uh, like a capacitor or a resistor or a semiconductor on the motherboard could potentially damage the module, could potentially damage the dim slot. So what I always say is put one of your hands on top of the module, push the tab, and then just switch over, push the other tab, and you just prevent it from shooting up. So just simple things to help protect your system and uh, also, you know, depending on what modules are taken out, hey, they might have value to resell, uh, which is a, another good thing to note. Uh, we actually buy back parts, so uh, if you have, um, you know, a bunch of modules laying around or a bunch of systems laying around, uh, generally we, we do buy in bulk, but you can uh, message our buyback team, buyback at cloudninjas.com, and just say, hey, you know, we got, you know, 30... Uh, eight gig modules would you be interested and in? we can tell you pricing what we, for all that stuff but anyhow um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to load this we're, like I said we're putting in 16 gigs uh, one of the important things to note is on the module itself you will see uh, there's all the leads down here at the bottom the the gold tips right here uh, the leads uh, there's a notch in the middle of it and that notch is known as a key now this is important because that key is not perfectly in the center and it's off just a little bit so if you look at the actual um, uh, dim slots there's a plastic piece in the middle that sticks up so if you don't have the module lined up properly then one you could damage the leads or two you could actually damage the dim slots so just little things just to be safe so another thing that I always recommend too is to go ahead and pop open all your tabs uh, just makes it easier for you when you're loading the system if everything is just pops open and ready to go so I'm gonna go ahead and install this um, and as we discussed this is dim slot one over here so this would be the first dim that you were installing if you were only putting in 
uh, say like four or two, um, and you'll notice I'm not touching the module. The module's sitting there. Uh, it looks like the module's in, but the module is not fully seated. Uh, it's unfortunately an all too common error that we hear from customers that they think uh, they have a bad dim, and really the dim's not fully seated. So one of the things we always recommend is for people just to you know, move all the modules amount around just because we want them to reseat them. But you'll notice, you'll hear this click right here. Listen for this click on both sides. You'll see the tab now has come up and that tab has clicked in to the side of the module right here and it pushes the leads down. So uh, that being said, I'll do it again. I'll show you just real quick and how easy it is. Uh, so you just push it straight down, click and click. And, and that's really just that easy. So I'll go ahead and I'll finish loading them up and show you how, uh, how much time it really takes. And one other note, the modules do flip when we were talking about the notch. They flip on this side, so you just have to make sure that you're paying attention. Otherwise, you could uh, potentially damage the module or damage the dim slot. So voila, just like that, you can easily load eight modules. I mean, really it took me probably one to two minutes. I know we fast forward it, but it, it, it really is just that simple. So, um, you know, wanted to, to just show you that process. Now we need to put everything back together, which really is pretty easy. Um, you're just gonna take this uh, plastic tip that's sticking out. You're gonna wanna line it up down here, put it back in the hole, and then slide it down gently here. And you're gonna see there's this notch right here that lines up with this. And it's gonna come down. And you're just gonna do the blue clip and click it back into place. Same thing, tip right here. Now I've got to be careful of the cable. Just line it up, blue tip, click it back into place. And I'm gonna take this cage, line it up and push this back in and boom. Just like that, we're done. Now we put the top back on and call it a day. So, hey, first off, thank you guys for stopping by and, and watching our video. We appreciate all of our followers and everyone that likes our videos. Um, if you've made it this far, hey, do us a favor and, and click that like and smash that subscribe. And like I said, hey, if you need any upgrades for yourself for your uh, Precision T3610, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We'd love to quote you and we'd love to help you out. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.